What's up my sad stars? I wanna take time in this video to let you know exactly what's gonna happen when you open up that AP exam in May. There's gonna be two sections. Each section will have 90 minutes with about a 15 minute break in between. The first section is 40 multiple choice questions and you're allowed to use your calculator on every single one of them. When that's done, you're gonna take that 15 minute break and then you're gonna take 90 minutes for six free response questions. Now the free response test is split into two parts. Part A, questions one through five, and part B, question six. But you do it all at the same time. Your proctor is not gonna tell you, all right, part A is over, now it's time to get part B. You can actually do them in any order you want. You could start with six, then go to five, then three, then two, then one, however you wanna do it. And I'll talk a little bit later on in this video about my recommendation for how to handle it, but that's exactly what you're gonna see. 90 minutes for 40 multiple choice questions, 90 minutes for six free response questions. All right, let's talk a little bit more about the multiple choice questions. There are nine units in AP statistics, and all of the nine units are covered in some shape and form on the multiple choice questions. Here's what the College Board says is the breakdown for the percentage of questions that come from each unit. For unit one, over exploring one variable data, we're looking at 15 to 23% of the questions. That's actually the most. Unit two, exploring two variable data is about five to 7% of questions. Unit three, collecting data, 12 to 15%. Unit four, probability, random variables and probability distributions, 10 to 20%. Unit five, sampling distributions, seven to 12%. Unit six, inference for proportions, 12 to 15%. Unit seven, over inference for means, 10 to 18%. Unit eight, over chi-squared, two to 5%. And unit nine, over slope, two to 5% as well. Now, units eight and units nine are what most kids learn at the very end. And oftentimes, even myself included, we, us teachers sometimes rush. But again, if unit eight and unit nine, which I don't think are that difficult, but the good news is that a big chunk of the multiple choice questions are not actually covered from unit eight and unit nine. We're talking maybe one or two questions max from each of those units. The majority of the questions come, again, if you actually look at the data here, from unit one and unit four. That's where you're gonna see the big chunk of questions come from. So make sure you spend a lot of time in practicing those questions. But there's also a ton of good inference questions as well from units six and seven. Now of those 40 multiple choice questions, I'll be honest, I think 10 to 15 are really, really simple one-step problems that you should know without doing little work then the remaining questions might involve a little bit of work, a little bit more thinking. So go through the entire 40 questions. Do what you can. Try to get that 10 to 15 that are easy done first. Maybe star and circle ones that you wanna come back to, and then at the very end, if you have time, go back to those questions and spend time on them. Sometimes the questions can be very wordy. Lots of words, not only in the question, but in the choices as well. So if those questions come up, maybe circle them, come back to them at the end. That way you can really take time at the end to focus on them. But I like to go to the short and easy ones first because oftentimes those are the ones that you can go over with quickly. Now, if you get around 20 to 30 questions correct, you're doing awesome. Don't panic too much. Remember, you don't have to get all of them to write to get a perfect five on the AP exam. All right, let's talk about the six free response questions. Now, question six is a little bit more trickier than some of the others. It's called an investigative task as opposed to just a free response question. Now, there's actually nothing that I or anybody could really do to prepare you for question six. You just have to have a strong statistical background of all the different things we've learned throughout the entire year to do really well on, unit, on, on question six. But I will say this, question six, as difficult as it may be, Part A and Part B are actually usually pretty simple. So don't ignore question six and think, oh, it's way too hard, I'm never gonna be able to do it. Take your time to read it. It's usually pretty simple to understand. And then try A, try B, at least you can get a couple points there and that's really gonna boost your grade. All right, now for the first five FRQs, they typically have a very common uh, format. Let's talk about each one right now. One of the free response questions is going to primarily focus on collecting data. That's unit three. I think this question usually is one of the easier ones. It's gonna be either dealing with an experimental design, some type of sampling techniques, where you gotta choose a different sampling technique, or maybe even dealing with bias in sampling. But that's usually one of the easier questions. It's gonna really focus on collecting data. Another of the FRQs is gonna focus on exploring data. This could be unit one where we explored one variable data or unit two where we explored two variable data. So here you're probably gonna be looking at a histogram, a box plot, a um, stem and leaf plot, or some type of plot of data that you're gonna to have to analyze. Could even be a scatter plot that we saw in unit two over analyzing the relationship between two categorical or two quantitative um, data sets. 
Now, a third FRQ is going to primarily focus on probability and sampling distributions. Now, for a lot of kids, that actually could be one of the hardest ones because they get a little bit scared of probability. So here we're really focusing on unit four over probability and unit five over sampling distributions. But the cool thing is when you're working with sampling distributions, oftentimes what we ask is a probability question. So really spend some time looking at problems that are straight out of unit four and unit five because something like that is gonna be one of the FRQs on the exam. A fourth free response question is going to primarily focus on inference. Here you're going to be asked to do a very important inference technique. Could be a confidence interval or could be a significance test for proportions, means, or maybe even chi-squared. The fifth question is going to deal with two or more skill categories together. So they might incorporate collecting data with inference or some type of analysis of exploring data with inference, something along, the along those lines. Now, those five different types of questions that I just talked about might not be in that exact same order. Like the problem that focuses on collecting data could come fifth and the problem with inference could come second, who knows? So the order doesn't really matter, just so that there's gonna be five questions, one focusing on collecting data, one focusing on exploring data, one focusing on probability sampling distributions, one focusing on inference, and one combining two or more categories together. Then, as I already mentioned, that sixth and final question is going to be an investigative task that combines a lot of different things together that we've learned. Here's what College Board says about the investigative task. The investigative task assesses multiple skill categories and content areas, focus on the application of skills and content in new contexts or in non-routine ways. So there might be something that you see in part six that you've actually never ever seen in class before. But what they do is they teach it to you. They explain what you need to do and you just kind of have to follow the skills learned. And every year it's different. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's harder. It really all, it all really just kind of all depends. So my recommendation is look at one through five first. Make sure you nailed them, make sure you've done your best job on them and then turn the page to part B, which is question six. Maybe you figure part A and part B out. Maybe you have 30 minutes and you can get all the way to the end, but at least get there and try it. And I also tell students this, maybe you don't have any time. You worked so hard on questions one through five that you never even got to question six. Well, that's okay. Again, you do not have to get 100% to get a perfect five. In most years, you're looking around a 65% on the entire exam to get that perfect five. So even if you don't do question six because you ran out of time, you could still get a perfect five on the test. All right, that's it. Hopefully you now have a very clear idea of exactly what's gonna be on the AP Statistics exam in May when you open it up. Best of luck, I can't wait to hear how you do.